Welcome back to the Sound for More channel and welcome back to another tutorial on Loopy Pro. Today I'm going to show you how you can quickly use a MIDI clip or MIDI loop to create an LFO type of automation against any parameters, really. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Additionally, if you would like to support what I do, please do check the instruction contained in each video description. Thank you again. Okay, so let's click here, a new project, and so we start fresh. Next, we go to the Canvas editor, and um, let's start to add uh, um, uh, some controls, but fundamentally what we need is, let's remove these uh, uh, row like so, let's add uh, a MIDI clip like so, and let's remove uh, also all uh, the other clips that we know that we don't need, so that we have only one MIDI clip and one uh, audio clip here, see, clip one, audio clip two, MIDI clip. And we could also put them um, uh, side by side, like so, we just uh, need to click here to create space and then we can drag and drop like so. Okay, and there we are. Okay, so we swipe up here on the audio clip and we import uh, just um, an audio file. Let's click import and let's listen. Perfect, okay. So we have something to play. So let's see how we can create something that uh, for example, increase the volume, then decrease the volume against this audio clip and keeps doing that as if it was an LFO going up and down. So how do we do that? Well, okay, first of all, we scroll, swipe up here on the MIDI clip and we go inside the uh, piano roll editor and we maximize it. Then let's zoom in a little bit so that we can see only mainly one measure. You can see measure number one or bar number one in the second start there. So let's choose a note, it doesn't matter which one, like C4, and let's click there. Okay, then we go to the third bit here, and we choose a B3, like so. You can see we have the loop now enabled. Let's close these, and you can see we have the two notes here, C4 and B3 there. So if I enable these and I click play, of course you hear this audio clip, and this MIDI clip is also running, but nothing is happening. Okay, as we have done for automation, let's click up here in the hamburger menu, or, and then let's go to control settings. Then under project profiles, no global profiles, project profiles, default, click on there. Here we need to add a binding, so click on add new binding. Okay, and we, need, we want to um, change the clip uh, parameter, so uh, we start to type parameter like that. Under clip action, there is a just parameter, click on it. Then what we are going to select here, instead of adjust continuously, click on it and we select assign value. Target, we specify a clip, the audio clip, only that one, and click done. And we set the volume here, okay, to go to maximum with perhaps um, um, 500 milliseconds. So double click here and select 0 0.5, like so, and click enter. 500 millisecond and click save. Okay. Next, we need a trigger to trigger this action. So we click where it says unassigned and we select the um, purple, which is the MIDI clip. And we select note and then we select C4. So we go up here where it says C4 and it is activating, which says on. Okay. Perfect. So this means that when the purple trigger uh, issue a note or create a MIDI event over C4, it triggers this action, which sets the volume to maximum. Now we key, we click save on these as well, and there it is. Now let's add a new binding again. Again, we search for parameter, the same thing. Clip action, adjust parameter there. Uh, we assign a value again to target a specific clip. We have only that audio clip, click done. And then what we are going to say volume, and this time the volume is going to go to zero, and we double click here to set it to 0 0.5 in terms of ramp, which means it will take 500 milliseconds or half a second to go to zero, as we have done for the volume going up. Click save. We need a trigger here again. Click on unassigned, then purple, which is your MIDI clip note, because that will be the trigger, and then we select B3D style. So we go to B3. 
oops, D3 there, click binding, um, click save. So when the C4 note is uh, played, we uh, change the volume to maximum. When B3 is um, triggered, we turn the volume down to minimal and we click offside to finish. Let's click play now. Of course, the volume is too high now. You can hear some clipping, so we can adjust that. So um, what we do, we, we do here, we go here back to control settings, and then we go to the default on the project profile where it says C4 here, and on the action, instead of going maximum here, we select it here to zero decibel because that makes more sense. And you can use these for anything. So for example, you could actually say, let's go back to the mixer and under the orange audio clip, which is this one, we're going to add an effect here. We're going to select a low pass, okay? We close the mixer. Now we go to control settings again under the project profile default. And uh, we could, for example, clear all the bindings, start again, add new bindings. Again, we select now parameters. And we need to scroll down where it says effect action, adjust effect parameters, click on that. Now we just assign a value again, we select the target, which is the low pass here. And we select the cutoff, cut off, which is what we want to change. We set these up to uh, 2.9 with a ramp, it will take roughly 0 0.5, actually 0 0.5 uh, second off a second, click save. And there it is, and then we assign a trigger for it which again would be the MIDI clip, a note, and that will be a C4 again, as we done earlier. Okay, go back to bonding and click save. Create a new one. Uh, again, we can search for effect is uh, quicker. And so you can see it says adjust effect parameter, click on it. Uh, we assign a value as a target, the low pass cutoff. And then instead of going up, we going down to uh, 10 Hertz here as a cutoff frequency, and then we take again half a second to actually reach uh, that position. Click Save. There we assign a trigger, which in this case is still the purple, a note, but this time it would be a B3 as well, like that. Click back binding, click Save, there it is. Okay, click Play. So in this case, we have actually uh, the same automation, but it is against a filter. Now, if you want to see uh, that automation, for example, to have a more visual effect, you could add, for example, a slider, click here to edit in the canvas, click um, here to expand on the left and add, for example, a slider um, there, okay? so. Click on old, maybe we resize it, something like that. And then we can drag also this MIDI clip. Actually, let's make it smaller first of all, like so. And then we can drag it uh, around here as well. And then we can resize these a little bit like so. And then what do we do? We click here on the slider where it says value change and we type effect again, adjust effect parameter and we do the target. There is only one effect low pass against the cutoff. Okay, so now you should see it changing here. The beauty of running it like this, of course, is that um, you can change the MIDI clip to change uh, um, a very quickly, for example, the frequency as if you were adjusting an LFO, for example, for an automation purposes, uh, right? So what you do, you just, uh, swipe up, you go back to the piano roll here, expand it like so, center it like so, and then you change the frequency of the note here. So you can have it here, for example, uh, right? And the next note there, it doesn't matter the length uh, like so. So it will be faster because we have four events in a bar instead of two. Close that, click play. So you can see that is much faster and you can continue like so. So you can create uh, various automation as if you were having an LFO now that it was adjusting up and down the frequency uh, of the filter, which is against this audio clip. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.